Hi folks, my name is John Epp, and I'm the curator at the USS Slater in Albany, New York. Today is the 78th anniversary of the Slater's commissioning. On May 1st of 1944, the USS Slater DE-766 was officially commissioned in Tampa, Florida. In this video, we're going to take a look at the first week of our deck log. Within this logbook, we can see not only what happened with the ship, but also what happened with the ship's crew. As always, don't forget to leave a like, a comment, and of course, subscribe. The deck log entry for this date is a flurry of activity. Captain R.B. Daggett placed the ship in commission, and Lieutenant Commander Marcel J. Blanc, United States Naval Reserve, assumed command. Blanc would remain the commanding officer of Slater through war's end. Next, we see each of the officers and enlisted personnel reporting for duty aboard Slater. This is not the end-all be-all of the ship's complement. Throughout her service, new officers and enlisted will report aboard, including Frank Slater's brother, Elam, who was assigned to the ship later in the month. Twelve minutes after the commissioning ceremony begins, the afternoon watch is set, and Captain Daggett heads ashore to prepare for more commissionings. For about an hour, various guests tour the ship, but a few spaces, such as the radio room, sound room, chart room, and the engineering spaces are off limits. Once they are ashore, work officially begins to whip the crew into shape. A fire drill is commenced and all crew report to their battle stations. The fire is identified in one of the after crew's quarters and is knocked down in less than 10 minutes. At 2200, yard workers come aboard to finish any last minute projects and ensure the ship is ready for sailing. They stay aboard into the early morning hours of 2 May. The ship's generators were also put through their paces at 0100. Once the sun rose, fresh water was taken on board and the general and chemical alarms were both tested. Slater's crew were ordered for muster and Blanc read the ship's orders. 20 minutes later, our sister ship, the USS Earl K. Olson, DE-765, which had been commissioned only three weeks prior, comes along Slater's port side, and honors are rendered. Other events include a general quarters drill, the taking on of 10,000 gallons of fresh water, and 1,025 gallons of fuel to allow the ship to travel a short distance to the Texaco fuel dock. From here, the ship recommence fueling, and of course, the smoking lamp is out. From 2000 to 0140, fueling operations continued. During this time, over 80,000 gallons of fuel were taken aboard. Now, fully fueled, Slater could travel 10,800 nautical miles. After fueling, Slater returned to the Lee Terminal Docks. With morning muster, no absentees were reported. A general quarters fire and collision drill was practiced before receiving some laundry supplies. For the remainder of the day, the engineering department ran dock trials. And on the 4th of May, Slater finally begins her exercise maneuvers. The CO, XO, and Navigator were all on the flying bridge with Lieutenant Commander W.B. Stanton of the United States Coast Guard aboard as pilot, and he was at the con. After the tug breaks away, Slater begins to put her crew to work. One-third speed, or six knots, is increased to two-thirds speed, of ten knots, and finally to standard speed, of sixteen knots. At 0800, the crew is mustered at their stations. Seamen second classes Copeland, Folds, and Terrell are all absent. More drills are conducted before anchoring in Tampa Bay off Egmont Key in six fathoms of water, that's roughly 36 feet, and 30 fathoms of chain to the starboard anchor, uh, about 180 feet. After a Coast Guard inspection, uh, Slater maneuvers to the Mallory Dock in Tampa, Florida, and the next day, on the 5th of May, it was kind of a slow day aboard Slater. Again, seamen second classes Copeland, Folds, and Terrell 
continued to be absent from morning muster. At 1643, 6,000 gallons of fresh water were taken on board, and 140 open weave cotton laundry bags were received from the Naval Supply Office. A magazine sprinkler inspection discovered a few discrepancies, and they were all corrected. On the 6th of May, the general alarm was found to be inoperable, but it was repaired within a couple hours. Uh, Copeland, Fold, and Terrell were officially declared stragglers, and ammunition began to be loaded at 1300. This was sent to Tampa from the Naval Ammunition Depot in Charles, Charleston, South Carolina. And you can get a pretty cool look of all the different types of ammunition and the amounts that Slater took on board at this time. Thank you for tuning in to this short look at Slater's first week in service. If you haven't already, click that thumbs up button, subscribe, and let us know if you would like to see more of Slater's history through her logbook. Until next time, take care.